Hey, good morning, everyone. Frontier Doc here. Just uh, looking at some of my summer gear in preparation for the uh, hikes and scouting trips uh, coming up this year. Uh, again, in preparation for that uh, fall uh, seasons that we're all looking forward to. So in looking at my gear, I was spending some time kind of going through a backcountry medical kit. I wanted to go over a few things that I think are pretty important to have with you, uh, whether or not you're uh, hunt hunting from a base camp or especially if you're out uh, you know, hunting out of a spike camp where you're going to be quite a ways away from that uh, proverbial 911 that we all hope can rescue us. And when that's not available, the real question comes up, what do we do and, and how can we best uh, supply ourselves with the gear we need to take care of ourselves if we get hurt or, or one of our friends or loved ones? So the first thing I always think about is, how do we keep ourselves safe? Uh, clearly, if you're the uh, rescuer or you're put into that rescuer role, uh, what can we do to keep ourselves from becoming a patient? And you know, some of the first things we can do is just look at the gear we have with us already. Um, some of our personal protective gear that we could use would be just like a rain shell to keep any blood or, or body fluids from contacting our own skin. The other thing is, I mean, a lot of us are going to have uh, gloves in our field dressing kits, but you want to have some good gloves with you in your first aid kit just to keep uh, blood or body fluids from contaminating uh, your own skin or, or getting any, any uh, wounds that you may have as well. The other thing to think about is, is our, our body's critical systems, the things that we need to stay alive all the time, and how can we best support that? Well, the first thing that comes to mind is thinking about the airway. You know, if somebody didn't have an airway for whatever reason, they were choking or, or maybe a drowning type situation or a lightning strike, I'd want to have some way that I could manage their airway uh, and, and give them rescue breaths if I needed to. And, and one of the things that we like to do is just have a, some kind of barrier device here. Uh, this is a, a very simple device that we can use uh, which will give us a barrier between us and the patient. Uh, something as simple as a, a plastic a shield that has a one-way valve in it that would go over the patient's mouth would allow us to breathe through that valve and, and protect ourselves while simultaneously giving that person that, that rescue breath that they need and that vital oxygen. So that's a real important key to have in our, in our kit. Um, once we move on from that, we look at life-threatening bleeding. And we all know in the, in the hobbies that we're pursuing in the backcountry, maybe we have broadheads, we certainly have knives for field dressing, we have projectiles, uh, bullets, uh, things that are going to cause, if things go wrong, some serious bleeding. So we're going to want to look at something that we can do quickly to preserve the, the blood volume that our patient has. And you know, perhaps the easiest thing that has come to mind now after several of the military um, situations that our country's been in the last few years is a tourniquet. So from Afghanistan and Iraq and our military medics, we've learned that these tourniquets are really indispensable for preventing uh, and stabilizing someone who's suffering from a life-threatening bleeding. Um, so what you want to do in these situations is just have a tourniquet with, sure, you can improvise these too, but you know the real thing here is if you need this, you need it fast. And there's really no, nothing faster than one of these tourniquets. It's designed to be able to put on yourself uh, just simply lace that on. Use this windlass here to just tighten up until the bleeding stops. Hook it in this nice keeper, and there you have it. You've got a good way to control bleeding while you move on to something else and then see if, if there's more help that you need or not. Maybe you can certainly deal with this wound uh, in this situation and stabilize that person just using a simple tourniquet. You know, they're light. Uh, they're very compact. They fold nice and flat, and they're, they're just a perfect backcountry piece for your kit. One of the caveats to using a tourniquet is you really have to have the ability to get the tourniquet between the wound and the heart. If this were a situation where the person had sustained an injury in the, in the armpit or maybe the groin or the torso of the body and had a bleeding wound, you'd want to have some roller gauze that you could simply pack in the wound to start absorbing some of that blood and creating a way for those platelets, those all-important cells that help our body make the clot, to actually provide some, some scaffolding, if you will, for them to find their friends and, and actually make that clot that we need. In addition, you may need some sterile gauze pads to dress a wound, and it's good to have a few of those around. They're, they're just nice pads to quickly put on a wound. And you could hold those in place with something as simple as Luco tape. Just having a small amount of that can be super beneficial. Um, and all of these things can work to manage this life-threatening bleeding that we're dealing with. Once you've got that bleeding under control, you may want to look at, is this a contaminated wound? Is this something that we really need to get some, some cleaning going on so the body doesn't develop an infection, or at least we can reduce that chance of infection? Some of the simple things that we can use there would be something as simple as a, a small syringe. And that's something that we can draw up some drinking quality water, and we can irrigate the wound and, and literally dilute the pollution that's, that's contaminated that wound. 
If we still have things like pine needles, maybe bark, uh, dirt or debris, grasses, we can use a, a simple travel toothbrush, uh, obviously one that's clean and, and never been used. And that can be moistened and used to just simply brush off the wound and reduce that amount of bacteria that the body has to fight. Once we're to the point of getting that wound pretty clean, we may still find some debris that's just stubborn and won't, won't release. And for that, a, a nice little tweezers can be really handy. These are super light, again, very flat and compact. Uh, and then sometimes having a needle is really nice to just pluck out those, those stubborn uh, pieces of debris that we just can't wash or brush away. So this gives you a really nice way to manage wounds in the backcountry. Once those wounds have been cleaned, you may want to put a little dressing on there. Before you do that, it'd be nice for a couple of reasons not to have that dressing to adhere so firmly that it's going to be painful when you have to go and re-inspect re that wound. One of the things that helps with both preventing and decreasing the chance of infection, but also lubricating that bandage, so it doesn't provide that uh, tough adhered uh, fabric that would be painful to remove. It's just some bacitrace and ointment. And we've got some of that in these nice little single use packages. They stay nice and clean. Again, super compact, light, uh, easy to deal with. <clears throat> Other things you may find useful in the back country would be some alcohol wipes. You can use these to clean off your equipment if you have to wipe off your tweezers, but also cleaning around a wound, getting rid of that sweat, that sunscreen, uh, maybe some of those body oils to allow some of these dressings that we have in these, these random band-aids that we've included in this kit, those will stick a lot better if you can get that skin relatively clean before placing those. In addition to, uh, to cleaning those wounds and, and trying to get that bandage on, sometimes a little uh, adhesive will help those bandages stick better, especially in the back country. Moving on to some other topics, you know, we all have aches and pains. Maybe they aren't life-threatening, but it's good to have a few things like some anti-inflammatories, um, just simple aspirin. Uh, also some painkillers like acetaminophen. Uh, things that, like Benadryl are good for mild allergic reactions. Uh, Lamotil, um, you know, you change your diet, you have different water sources, heaven forbid you do get an infection. You may want to slow down some diarrhea so you can at least avoid dehydration. So having some things like Lamotil uh, in your backcountry kit is certainly worthwhile as well. The other things that we deal with a fair amount are sprains and strains, uh, hopefully not fractures, but I'm sure we've all had a, a, a friend that's had a, a fracture, an unstable musculoskeletal injury in the backcountry. For that, something like a SAM splint is really indispensable. Sure, we could fabricate and improvise splints just fine, but again, that takes time. And a lot of times time is your enemy when the, the clouds are coming in, and like today we're getting a little rain coming in. To, uh, you know, we want to get something done and get on the trail and get back to the trailhead. So a SAM splint, a pretty interesting history. Uh, Dr. Sam back uh, in the Vietnam era was playing with a Wrigley's gum wrapper and trying to come up with a splint that made sense for the military medics to carry in the jungles of Vietnam. And he realized that if he had this thin piece of aluminum with some padding on it, uh, it was light, it was easy to fold up and get in a, in a first aid kit. But if he put some crimps in it and turn these things into a little canoe, you could actually take something that's very flexible and easy to pack and actually make it a very rigid device for splinting. So putting some of these crimps in like this will allow you to very easily make a splint to deal with extremity wounds, okay? One of the things that are handy there is to keep that in place with is something like vet wrap or in the, me the medical world we call this coban. This is something that we can you, you know, get from veterinary supply houses. It really holds these in place really nicely. It allows the splint to be adjustable if there's any swelling. This is a great tool. Just a simple roll like this can help you keep a splint in place. It can keep a bandage in place. And it can really do a great job for you in, in a, just a, a wide array of backcountry medical problems. The last thing I'd like to talk about is just the utility of a simple triangular bandage. A very thin piece of fabric uh, that you can use to make a sling. Uh, you can uh, put a fold, uh, or just a little knot in one side and make a, a simple little pocket for your elbow. Uh, you can make a sling then that you can put around your own neck and or, or splint uh, your partner uh, and help uh, that that arm that's unstable or injured keep that from kind of winging out on the trail and, and becoming an impediment to uh, to getting back home. Uh, the other thing you can use this with this is just a, you can use this as just a uh, a tie to hold a dressing in place and you can wrap that right around the arm over these four by fours and just make a real nice compact uh, bandage with that. So with this medical kit, you know, we've set this up and the whole thing weighs just under a pound. I think it comes in about 14 ounces. With all this gear in, in a nice stretch little pack here, we've got this, it'll fit right in the bottom of your backpack. Nice thing is it flattens out. It, you don't even know it's there. 
and it's just a great insurance policy. It gives a lot of peace of mind to those folks at home and our loved ones that, that know we have a passion for the backcountry. We want to be away from the trail, but you know, they worry about what happens if we're out by ourselves. And, and this way, we've got a little bit of a toolkit uh, to help us in the situation uh, if things go poorly. So I hope you've enjoyed this uh, review of some essential first aid kit uh, items that, that really would be beneficial on the trail. Have a great day, and I hope you have a good hunting season. Mm -hmm.